Okay, so uh, the last piece of this is uh, solving difference equations. So we're going to start with an example that's given here. So suppose we want to solve this difference equation, and we're given these is the second order difference equations. You see the k plus 2 there, um, and k plus 1 plus y plus k, and then on the other side the input is defined as the unit step. So we're given a, a, a difference equation with the input signal and with the initial conditions. To solve this difference equation, we use the one-sided Z transform on both sides, so that when you do this K plus 2 quantity, you're going to use uh, the, the property of uh, time shift for the one-sided Z transform. So this term breaks down into three terms, which includes both of the initial conditions, and then this term breaks down to you know, these two terms, and then finally this one alone, and then on the other side we just have the z-transform of the input. So when we plug in this initial condition, and, and if we move these, uh, let's see, y of 0 equals 0, in this one, if we move that over to the other side, in fact, I have that written on the next line here, <clears throat> so if we just move these over to the right, what we'll get is just the y of z times a polynomial, and on the other side we'll get uh, the r of z plus uh, whatever we transferred from the other side. Okay, so uh, just solving now, we just put uh, these over the same uh, common denominator, uh, we'll get, um, and then, you know, we put these over, so this is just one more term, but we have to multiply it by z minus 1 to get it over the same denominator. We end up with uh, y of z equals the numerator, which is z squared plus z, which I factored, and then the bottom was, this was from the right side, and then this was from the left side. And so our poles, again, complex poles and a real pole. So when we break this down, notice this is a pure sinusoid because it's 1. <clears throat> so we're going to be looking at a certain tables, a certain uh, lines in the table. So uh, again, don't forget to divide by z so that we're left with just the z plus 1 here because we want to put that z back in later. Again, we're looking at the table, and we're determining then what, if this is equal to 1.5 here, what the cosine of Bt has to be equal to, and then that will help us with the numerator, which will involve the sine. So let's look and see what we have here. So what I've done is I've included both terms. I've included, uh, is that 20 and 21 in the table? because I think that's what we used last time. But anyway, this would be, one of them would be the sine and one would be the, the cosine. And so I want to find out how much is sine and how much is cosine. And then I include the, the numerators from the table with the values that are given what we've calculated here. Then what I do, this makes it a little more complex to find the partial fraction coefficients. So I just go ahead and find A by the normal method. And then for the B and C, what I do is I take um, what I have and then I equate the coefficients. So I multiply both sides by these terms. And so I get Z plus 1 on the left. And then when I multiply all of that out and equate coefficients, by the way, you have this uh, set of notes is on the website under the 2010 notes. You can find B and C. It turns out C is equal to 0. So it's pure cosine then. <clears throat> I 
I think that's all I wanted to say about that. I just did some observations about that. You see that um, that the, the poles of this are on the unit circle. So that's why we have pure oscillation coming from that. Okay, that's it.